on my last video, I mentioned something about having a red dot finder on top of my DSLR, and uh, I just wanted to show you how I built this. I got a few questions how that was done. And so you can see it sitting up there. I got everything off of Amazon for about you know, a little under uh, maybe $25 tops. And it's a slick little device. Helps you exactly put your camera and your lens right on the target you're wanting to shoot. So if you know where Andromeda is, you can put this on Andromeda and it should show right up in your viewfinder when you try a test exposure. back on Amazon and I'm going to show you where you can find your red dot finders. So here's one for, from Celestron for $20. It's fine. I've used that one in the past. If I go down to this one here by Sfaboni, I guess that's how you pronounce that, for $15, $15.99. It's about the same item. And as you can see right here is I can bring that in a little bit. Let me go back up to the Celestron for a minute. Same thing. Right here, you see this bracket with these two screws holding on. You actually take that off. You don't even need that for what I'm going to show you here. So that's the red dot finder, and I'll show you again how to get to the uh, site to get the, uh, the mounting hardware. This is a screenshot from my computer, and this is where I got my items for making my red dot finder uh, fit my DSLR. So you can see in the upper right, upper left side rather, where there's, you get two of each. One of them is a little bracket that attaches to the scope, to the red dot scope. And then the little item below is the hot shoe mount. And I'll show you how they fit together in just a bit. You can see the red dot finder here in my hand on the table. And it's got the mounting hardware built into it right now. So here where my finger is, is the off on switch to activate the, uh, the red dot and the knob up front as well as fittings on the bottom allow you to adjust where the red dot is. Um, for using wide angle lenses, uh, it's not going to be that critical on your camera. If you were using this on a larger telescope, you'd want to sight this in, but uh, we're not going to deal with that right now. So, bear with me a minute. I only have two hands. The silver screw I'm going to undo, and that will take the uh, bracket off of the red now, dot. Earlier, I mentioned that uh, you take this piece off the bottom down here, where my thumb is, had two screws holding it on, and you can kind of see where the screw holes were. I had to take a file and file about a quarter inch down on that to get this to fit. That's the most manually uh, oriented task you have to do to make this uh, this work. But you have to file that down so that this groove is exposed to put the you fitting You can see into. over here why I had to file that down. That fitting fits right in there and it, it fits wonderfully. This it holds device everything with together. the two screws threads into the bottom. This, this kit comes with two parts. One is the item on the left, the other one's the item with the two uh, gnarled uh, knobs on to the right. And that quarter 20 thread fits right into the bottom of the bracket to the left. You can see the hot shoe on the bottom doesn't look like anything you would expect to go in, but it fits right into the hot shoe on your camera. The thread on the left, you secure that down so that it locks the thread into place on the bracket. And you can see that the hot shoe is running parallel to the red dot finder. Now I have that adapter going into the top of my hot shoe. So you can see how it's supposed to fit. And it's the bottom thread is nestled down against the, uh, the hot shoe, so it holds it into place. So it's fairly stable right to left, up and down. I'm attempting to show how this views. There we go. You see the red dot. And I'm getting it right on top, I believe, the Saturn. It's close enough to get to where you need to be with a wide-angle lens.